Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of equivalent fractions, decimals, and percents. This is standard 6.4G in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 42 off the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So a restaurant is offering cooking classes, and the only numbers we're going to get in this problem are right here. 24 of the 30 days in November. And we need to change that into a decimal. It is equivalent to that fraction of days that the classes were offered. Now they don't necessarily give this to you as a fraction. They say 24 of the 30. That's your first step is to turn that into a fraction, but that's not going to be super difficult. 24 of 30. We can easily just kind of view this of as, as our fraction bar, right? So if we wanted to do 24 of 30, we could do that. And so how do we turn a fraction into a decimal? That's going to be our equivalency here that we're working with. So a fraction, when we turn that into a decimal, uh, there are a few different options. Sometimes we can get to a denominator. If you can change to equivalent fraction with a denominator of either 10, 100, or 1,000, you're golden because tenths, hundreds, and thousands are decimal places. That is one way to do it, and so we will look to see whether we can do that in a moment, but the easiest way that you can always do no matter what is to divide up. So let's take a look at dividing up. That means we're going to take our denominator, 30, and we're going to divide it up into our numerator, 24, which means this becomes our divisor, so that's what we are dividing by, and this becomes our dividend. This is what we are dividing into, and that's how you can change any fraction into a decimal at any time. So 30 doesn't go into 2, 30 doesn't go into 24. And so what that does is that allows us to put a decimal zero. We're going to put a decimal up there on the quotient bar. And now we are in business, because now we can look to see, well, how many times does 30 go into 240? Well, I don't know my 30s facts, so you probably don't either. But we can just take a look at, you got a zero here and a zero here. So let's just ignore both of those zeros. And let's just look at 3 and 24. Well, 3 and 24, that's pretty simple. That's 8. So let's just double check. So that's going to be 240. So that's going to work. So that's a multiple of 10. That's something we learned in fifth grade. And so when we are dividing, we could use, we could just take some zeros off or add some zeros, and we can still use that 8 right there. So now I think I know my answer is 0 0.8. Now, I mentioned there was a, a possibly a different way to, to solve this, and can we do it if we turn that into a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000? Well, it's 30. So if I wanted to get 24 fortieths, let's say 24 thirtieths here, Let me see. I could I could either multiply it up to get to 100 or down to get to 10. I bet you I can get down to get 10. So when we're making an equivalent fraction like this, we are thinking 30. Since I'm going down, I'm going to divide. 30 divided by what makes 10? And that's going to be another fact. That's going to be 3. So I'm going to um, divide the top part by 3. So that is going to be 3 thirds, because 3 thirds equals 1. So 24 divided by 3, that makes 8. So take a look at what I have. 8 tenths, 8 tenths. And so you could just turn this fraction straight into a decimal because of the tenths place. This corresponds with the, the first place value after the decimal. And then we would simply just need to bubble this in on our bubble sheet here. We've got a decimal. There's two decimal places, and they go up to the thousandths place. So we would just put a 0 here, and we would put an 8 in the tenths place. 